for anyone who's driven along Highway 280, looked to the western hills, and wondered what's out there. What wonders are woven into the tapestry of ridges and ravines? What mysteries are shrouded in the rolling figures of fog and forever forests? Much of it is land protected and preserved in perpetuity by the public beginning 50 years ago when ordinary citizens did something extraordinary and led the effort to create the Mid-Peninsula Regional Open Space District, otherwise known as Midpen. So these lands are a gift from the people who founded the organization to the people who come after them, all the generations that come after. Midpen protects nature on the peninsula, providing a gateway to its natural and historical wonders and a sanctuary for all its inhabitants. Coming out here, this reinvigorates me. It connects me to the earth. It inspires me. Some of my best thoughts about life and how best to live it happen when I'm out on Midpen lands. Roaming these ridges are some of the most secretive, charming, and iconic wildlife California has to offer. A lot of folks don't realize that we live in an, in an incredibly diverse area and we live in a biodiversity hotspot. These lands are also layered in human history. They're a time capsule of California's past and a guide to its future. One of the things that I love the most about this is the sense of discovery that every time we come out, still even, we find new things that we didn't know about before that we piece together from those layers of history. Some of that history has left the land wounded and scarred, and Midpen is working to heal it. It seems like every mess is actually a wonderful opportunity for something better, right? <laughs> Our wildest dreams about what this could become is exactly what it became. What started as an effort to protect the rolling hills above Silicon Valley has grown to encompass much more, preserving the verdant grasslands and clear running streams extending to the ocean and sustaining the coastside's legacy of agriculture. To be able to make a living on the coast, doing what you love for five generations, it, it, it means the world to me, honestly. These gifts of open space and nature are here today because of the vision and tenacity of dedicated local residents 50 years ago. In the early 1960s, the orchards and farms that made up the Valley of Heart's Delight were giving way to the business parks and suburbs of Silicon Valley. The loss of open space was alarming for a public that loved the area's natural splendor and agricultural bounty. I kept looking around and saying, well, you know, there's nothing like what I needed when I was a child. No place where everything was uh, natural. The creeks had been cemented in and we're carrying water down from the hills in, in concrete. Nanette Hanko, then a mother of three, was one of the many who yearned to protect the diverse landscapes of the Santa Cruz Mountains and our access to them. She joined together with a growing cadre of conservation-minded community members and organizations like Green Foothills. These were people who were otherwise, you know, had full-time jobs. There were scientists and geologists and school teachers and housewives, lots of housewives. <laughs> I think they had this vision of what was going to be lost if they didn't take action as soon as possible. Encouraging that action were local journalists, including an influential editorial by Jay Thorwaldson of the Palo Alto Times. Out comes an editorial saying those conservationists or whatever they are called should get off their butts. You know, that isn't exactly what he said, but that's what it said to me. And they should do something positive, like form an open space district, like the, it happened in the East Bay, you know, in the 1930s. Nanette took up the challenge 
and from her living room, a grassroots effort called Room to Breathe was launched. They organized the community, rallied political support, and sponsored Measure R, a ballot initiative to create a special governmental district to preserve open space, and its language reads like poetry. Open space is our green backdrop of hills. It is uncluttered baylands where water birds wheel and soar, where blowing cord grass yields its blessings of oxygen, where the din of urban life gives way to the soft sounds of nature. So Nanette Hanko really shows that it really just takes one person to create a massive movement. She mobilized her friends. She mobilized open space enthusiasts. She carried that message forward. In the election of November 1972, citizens on the peninsula voted overwhelmingly in favor of Measure R, giving birth to Midpen. It was a watershed event that changed the future of our Bay Area landscape. Everything you do every day can make a difference. You have so much time here on the planet and if you decide that you want to be part of a change that you feel is really important, um, then do it. The first mid Pen property was Foothills Open Space Preserve. And before long, the number of preserves began to grow, encompassing the region's great diversity and beauty and providing essential habitat for native plants and wildlife while protecting the headwaters of important watersheds. But Midpen needed to move faster than the bulldozers. So in 1977, Midpen proposed forming a private land trust to work with landowners. Dubbed the Peninsula Open Space Trust, or POST, the group has become Midpen's primary nonprofit partner. They're able to be nimble, quick, and work privately with landowners as they acquire land, and then they transfer those to us, which then we can then move forward and manage these lands into the future with the resources and the staff that we have. With the help of POST, Midpen was able to connect even larger swaths of open space in a growing greenbelt. At its 50th anniversary, Midpen cares for more than 65,000 acres in 26 open space preserves in San Mateo, Santa Clara, and parts of Santa Cruz counties. These lands are public lands. They belong to the public and they are under the care and stewardship of Midpen. And our role is to conserve them, to manage them, to steward them, to protect the resources that are, are part of them, to restore areas that have been damaged in the past, to make sure that species and, and plants continue to thrive, and to open up certain areas to the public so that they can also come onto the lands and enjoy them themselves. Over the years, the public has continued to support and renew its commitment to Midpen. Most recently, in 2014, with the passage of Measure AA. Measure AA has infused a whole new ability in the district to be able to be, do larger projects and have a grander scale to our, to our mission. Measure AA has provided essential resources to restore and make accessible additional lands throughout the region, including Bear Creek Redwoods and the iconic peak of Mount Umminum. Work like this is especially important as we face new challenges in the years ahead. So many of the challenges that Midpen sees moving forward, a lot of them have to do with climate change. And so we know that we need to increase our efforts to, to make sure that our areas are resilient. The many people who created and have supported Midpen this past half century have given all of us an extraordinary gift of nature and a responsibility to carry forward Midpen's important work.
from badgers in their burrows to murrelets high in redwood canopies, Midpen lands are home to a surprising variety of wildlife, flying, sliding, and swimming across the landscape. We live in a, a really exciting and fascinating area. This is a biodiversity hotspot, and it's also an extremely urbanized area. And so I think a lot of folks don't tend to realize that we have these, you know, wildland wonders in, in our backyard. The thriving diversity of mid-pen open spaces provide the habitats wildlife rely on for shelter, food, and family. One of the things that people need to keep in mind when they come out to nature is that we're entering somebody else's home. We're not alone on this planet. This is not just for humans, but that we have these areas that we set aside for nature, for the other inhabitants of, of this planet. We need wildlife, not just because we love them, but also because they maintain balance in the natural world. Top predators such as mountain lions, bobcats, and badgers control populations of deer and rodents, which can overconsume native plants, wander onto neighborhood roads and highways, and spread disease when their populations are too large. Midpen has this braided mission of um, protecting and supporting natural resources that are found in this very diverse area, but also providing opportunities for recreation and enjoyment to our community and to our public. At Rancho San Antonio Open Space Preserve, the trails visitors use for recreation are the same ones wildlife use to travel and hunt, sometimes surprisingly close to public areas. Rancho is one of our most heavily used preserves by far and we have a fairly healthy, consistent mountain lion population moving through or at least occupying this preserve. And so it's an inherent um, management balance that we're trying to strike. Striking that balance requires an understanding of how mountain lions and other wildlife use these trails. So Midpen has set up a grid of cameras throughout the preserve, snapping photos of the animals as they move past. It's a lizard. Today I'm checking wildlife cameras. I basically open them up and see what's on the cards, take them back so that I can um, analyze them. Photos, we get 5,300. So we're trying to see um, what wildlife are doing in our preserve, especially mountain lions and what their activity is like, um, how our trail use is impacting um, their movements in the parks. This is just one of an array of cameras set up throughout the preserve, documenting the diversity of life here and providing Midpen with valuable information. We're hoping to have more data to make um, confident management decisions that will protect not only the wildlife, in particular mountain lions, but also our preserve visitors. More than data points, these photos capture intimate moments and reveal the mysterious lives of wildlife in our midst. You know, I'm always just really in awe kind of getting this peek into a world that not many people get. It's shocking just how much life is, is there. A tremendously like exciting array of behavior and these sneak peeks into wildlife activity that you wouldn't otherwise get to see. It's really fun. Some of these animals live here at Rancho, but many are just passing through, traveling from one preserve to another. Connecting these open spaces is essential for the survival of species like badgers, which follow their food along the grassy ridgelines of the Santa Cruz Mountains, and mountain lions, which can have territories of 60 to 100 square miles. Mountain lions need these large landscapes, large protected landscapes, so that they have room to roam and, and go about their business without um, you know, getting into conflict with people. Midpen is working with the Santa Cruz Puma Project to study mountain lion populations in the Santa Cruz Mountains to learn more about their habitat needs and how they move across the landscape. In trying to understand how pumas are affected by humans in this environment, we've been putting radio collars or GPS collars around uh, their necks and 
Uh, that allows us to collect this invaluable information about where they're going, what they're doing, um, and how they're responding to humans on the landscape. The data they're collecting tracks the precise movements of individual cats as they live their lives and illustrates how busy roads limit their ability to find food, mates, and habitat. The green belt is valuable, but it's most valuable when it's connected. So it's not just protecting the green belt, to me it's connecting the green belt. To help connect breaks in the green belt, Midpen is working with its partners to design and build a wildlife crossing along this stretch of busy Highway 17, just outside of Los Gatos. It will actually be two crossings, an underpass for wildlife and an overpass for people, linking two long stretches of the Bay Area Ridge Trail. So the wildlife crossing, it's going to connect a population uh, that will help them in the near term, but it will help for generations to come. These animals are already facing the current threats, but we know that we have a changing climate that might be hotter and drier and harder to navigate, and let's make one less hurdle for them. It gives me great hope because once we put in the wildlife tunnel, they'll have a way to safely get across the road and sort of keep these two sides of the Santa Cruz Mountains connected for mountain lions and lots of other wildlife as well. Balancing the needs of people and wildlife is a challenge, but projects like this one will connect protected open spaces and help ensure the future of many iconic species and allow us all to coexist in this special place we all call home. People have called the Santa Cruz Mountains home for millennia. Their stories and their relationship to the environment are written in the land, layers of history that remain today. One of the things that I love the most about this is the sense of discovery that every time we come out, still even, we find new things that we didn't know about before that we piece together from those layers of history. Of the more than 65,000 acres that Midpen has purchased, restored, and made available to the public, much of it, when acquired, was heavily impacted by us humans and far from pristine. Midpen's trying to balance, you know, returning the site to kind of its natural element, but also maintaining elements of the history and trying to interpret that to the public. That's especially true here on Mount Amina, with its remnant radar tower perched high atop. It's a familiar landmark for South Bay residents, but its history is largely unknown. This is a sacred mountain. And this is where our people would come to pray. They would make sojourns to come up to this hill so that they could be closer to the Creator. This was the way for millennia. But beginning with the arrival of Spanish missionaries in the late 18th century and continuing through most of the 20th century, members of the Amamutsan tribal band were not allowed access to this mountaintop and were cut off from the center of their spiritual life. Well, the times when Mount Um was not available to us as a sacred site, it was a sign of just great loss, of great sadness. Decades later, during the Cold War, Mount Um was the site of the Almondon Air Force Station, a radar facility eyeing the sky for potentially hostile aircraft. It was like a small city, home to personnel and their families. There was a bowling alley here, and there was a swimming pool, and then all the associated military infrastructure that goes along with that. And they wanted to just keep all the families up here and happy. After the air station closed in 1980, the infrastructure fell into disrepair and nature began reclaiming the land. When we first came up here as planners and looked around and it was like, wow, there's just, there were 88 structures up here and they were all decrepit. Midpen acquired the property in 1986 and after decades of developing a new vision for the land, 
began the process of tearing down decrepit buildings, rebuilding the mountaintop, and returning the mountain to a more natural state. Reconnecting this summit with its traditional stewards was also part of the vision, and a unique partnership with the Amamutsan was established. We were invited to meet with the um, Mid-Peninsula Open Space fo um, uh, folks and to talk about what our interests and goals were for up here. And because our people used it for prayer, that's what we requested of them. To help honor this request, Midpen built a stone circle for ceremony and prayer. We danced as our ancestors danced. The songs we sang uh, were this, are the same songs that our ancestors sang. They're recognized by many tribes as being ancient songs. They're very old. And, um, we still carry them with us today, and that's what we sang up here for the first time in 200 years. That was um, just a very powerful, powerful day for us. And having an opportunity to come here and, and, and look at these, these views that are, and know that we were walking the land that our ancestors walked, and to see the views that our ancestors looked at, and knowing that we were closer to the Creator. Oh, that was just a, a, an overwhelming feeling of, of um, of joy and, and happiness. The Amamutsun want to share with us a profound relationship we all can have. And for Midpen, preserving both the human and natural history of this land is an important part of its mission. Mount Amunum Summit is a perfect example of what Midpen's mission is all about. It's to protect the land in the first place, restore it, and then uh, provide it free of charge for low intensity recreation and enjoyment. The restored peak was open to the public in 2017, and Midpen invites all of us to soak in the stunning views, learn about the mountain's history, and discover this magical mountain on newly constructed trails or by a road accessible to all. A few miles to the north, and a couple of thousand feet below sits Bear Creek Redwoods, another site with a rich history and inviting future. This site is amazing in how it balances both the natural landscape as well as the man-made landscape. Every brick that you see out here and every structure that's still standing tells a story. Located just minutes away from San Jose, 1,400-acre Bear Creek Redwoods has trails, towering redwoods, and remnants of the land's rich human history. Midpen hired us back in 2017 to record and evaluate the historical significance of a bunch of resources at Bear Creek Redwoods. And we probably documented 30, 35 archeological sites throughout the preserve. A team of archeologists has been painstakingly sifting through the layers of history and revealing the remains of decades of human occupation. In the mid-19th century, it was a sawmill, and then from the 1880s to 1930s, a series of wealthy businessmen settled here as like a rural retreat. During the Great Depression, the land was sold to the Jesuits, who established Alma College, their first seminary on the West Coast. In the 1960s, the college closed, and developers dreamed of building a golf course and luxury homes. But the public opposed the plans, and Midpen and its partners were able to purchase the property and preserve it as open space. After years of cleanup and restoration, Bear Creek Redwoods was finally open to the public in 2017. And happily, visitors, both human and wild, are finally coming back. So this is a rough-skinned newt. Um, one of the native newt amphibian species that we find here. Also found here are several species of bats making a comeback, which provide valuable benefits for both the ecosystem and us. They're out there every night catching sometimes thousands of insects, uh, including things like mosquitoes that I know a lot of people don't like. Uh, as well as agricultural pests. Um, so they're doing us a tremendous service. 
To encourage bats to roost here, temporary structures have been installed, designed by local bat experts and built by Midpen, structures that have proven to be very successful. We call them uh, the bat sheds. Um, and they're specifically designed to house multiple species of bats. The first few years of uh, monitoring out here, we would only get a handful of bats um, coming out of these structures. And in the last few years, we've had several hundred bats coming out. Along with these temporary structures, Midpen has also retrofitted an old carport here that has enticed a very rare species of bat to repopulate the area. There's, there's a bat, a little myotis. Hello, friend. Uh, you can see some of the guano in the corner where those bats have been hanging. This is the species that we're hoping to get in here, which is the Townsend's bigger bat, and I'm very happy to see it. Those ears just, they get me every time. <laughs> They're so great. Finding this solitary bat indicates this structure may become a valuable roost for more Townsend's bats, a magnificent sign for the future of these important critters. The stories of Bear Creek Redwoods and Mount Ummanum are still evolving. Thankfully, the latest chapters are being written carefully and thoughtfully by the folks at Midpen, to the benefit of all of us. The rolling hills near the San Mateo and Santa Cruz County coast are lovely and valuable. Their beauty is easy to see, but less obvious is its complex ecosystem that supports a wealth of wildlife and a way of life that's continued in these parts for generations. But all this beauty, open space, and ranch land was almost wiped away by plans for major development in the 1960s. 100,000 people were projected to be living in the Half Moon Bay area by 1990, and another 100,000 people were projected to be living in the Pescadero area by 1990. And there were gonna be all kinds of freeways linking the Bay side to the coast side. Legal battles were waged, votes were cast, and eventually conservation groups such as Midpen and Post were able to preserve open space and local agriculture right here along the coast. It's very calming to me to be in a beautiful, quiet place like this. I think for a lot of people, when we think about protecting biodiversity and conservation, we tend to think of you know, mountaintops and, and old growth forests. And I think grasslands have often been a little bit overlooked. Grasslands are one of the most diverse and important habitats here along this stretch of the California coast. They may look sparse, but they are not. And the reality is that uh, they comprise a large portion of the surface of our planet and support a disproportionately large amount of the biodiversity. For example, in California, most of the species, uh, both plants and animals that are listed as rare or endangered, otherwise special status, occur in our grasslands. This is a very biologically rich area. There's a great diversity of birds that you're likely to observe here right now. Grassland birds and other animals, such as the endangered San Francisco garter snake and the elusive American badger, make their homes here. But missing from this landscape are the great herds that once roamed these hillsides, grazing the grass, fertilizing the soil, and churning the vegetation with their hooves. Grasslands are very disturbance-dependent plant communities, um, so grazing can provide that disturbance that, that uh, serves a lot of functions in the ecosystem. Fire, hooved animals, and grazing, these are all types of disturbance that grasslands need to open up vegetation. Plant litter accumulates over time in an undisturbed environment, can ultimately limit the amount of light exposure to live plant tissue underneath, so that that periodic disturbance helps open up the thatch layer and promote growth. Cows have been providing that critical ecological disturbance. Midpen works closely with ranchers in the region 
to achieve its ecological management goals and allow agriculture to continue to thrive. It really is a collaborative relationship. For us, those ranchers, livestock operators, are providing a service to us as well in terms of using their animals to manage this landscape in a way that's conducive to the type of habitat management that we're trying to do. We have many separate pastures so that animals can be rotated out of one area to give it rest uh, in between periods of intermittent disturbance. And that's that intermittent disturbance is what really helps us um, sort of uh, optimize the diversity that we can support out here on this landscape. This is called conservation grazing, and it's a win-win for everyone involved. For the species who call these grasslands home, for the ecological stewardship of land that is protected and accessible to all of us, and for ranchers continuing agricultural traditions generations old. It's uh, more than what you can put into words in terms of the respect I have for not only MidPen but every agency I work with, um, just to be able to be in the position where you can carry that tradition on. Alan Renz and other ranchers are able to pursue their traditional ways of life, while MidPen scientists provide support by monitoring resources carefully and creating management plans so cattle, wildlife, nature, and we can all flourish together in an ever-changing environment. Adaptive management is a term we like to use in that it's a plan that's always changing as we um, learn new things about how um, our best management practices are working or not working um, and to better anticipate the changes in the future. Midpen monitors and manages many agricultural ponds scattered throughout its preserves, about 100 ponds in all. Even though they were created artificially in the past, they have since become extremely useful for supporting the recovery of certain wildlife species like California red-legged frog, for supporting our own conservation grazing program, um, and they're just beautiful to look at as you hike by. With a changing climate causing more drought, water held in these ponds has become increasingly precious. Midpen monitors these ponds very carefully. Temperature is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Midpen samples the ponds regularly to ensure they're healthy and serving nature in positive ways. We continuously monitor ponds like Lower Turtle Pond behind me uh, to make sure that recovery of wildlife is happening, managing invasive species is happening, and then we also try to anticipate the changes um, from climate change that have uh, much longer timescales over which we have to plan for and be able to predict and anticipate um, how water availability on the land is going to change. Predicting the future and the effects of climate change is not easy, but guided by science, Midpen is protecting and stewarding these grasslands to ensure they're thriving for wildlife, agriculture, and all of us for generations to come. I love being in natural environments. I'm also very intrigued and fascinated by the, the great diversity of life forms that occur here. And I feel really privileged to be in a position to help um, steward and take care of these places. San Gregorio. Pescadero, Parisima. These are just a few of the creeks flowing across Midpen lands, and they're the lifeblood of the region. These lands are incredibly essential for our water supply and for the health and well being of this area. From the ridgelines that frame them to the deep pools that empty into the ocean, these waters support wildlife agriculture, and us. Maintaining the health of these watersheds is an important part of Midpen's mission. We really are doing an amazing thing by preserving these lands in perpetuity, and it's amazing that we're able to not only do that, but also open them up in an ecologically sensitive way where folks can see them and interact with these environments in a way that um, will allow them to continue into the future. The concept of a healthy watershed starts at the summit because everything that happens at the summit has an impact downstream eventually. The more land we preserve and restore, 
ends up being uh, really beneficial for a range of both ecosystem functions and societal needs. Balancing these many needs is a significant and ongoing challenge for Midpen. There's care and purpose to everything that our staff bring to the land because our intention, our goal is to leave the land healthier than it was when we first received it. When Midpen purchased what is now El Corte de Madera Creek Preserve, nearly 3,000 acres in the upper headwaters of the San Gregorio Creek watershed, they inherited land that had been carved up with a web of decrepit logging roads and was littered with trash. When we are able to acquire a new, new piece, we look carefully, how can we restore this to really start to bring back the health and well-being of that land? Midpen planters staked out new trails that naturally contoured with the hillsides, and crews decommissioned old logging roads and turned them into gently sloping trails. One of the more important aspects of, of trail design is putting those undulating ups and downs into the trail so that um, the water is not causing the, the problems that it had in the past. The newly formed trails allow all of us to explore this recovering forest land without causing erosion or silting up the creeks and streams downslope. Now the logging roads look like the natural topography. Of all the projects I do, it's one of the most satisfying ones because you're taking these like really terrible roads out of a watershed that needs all the help it can get. It's testament to what can be done after you've inherited a mess of legacy logging roads. Um, it took a long time and it took a lot of funding, but in the end, I think everybody agrees that it's worth it and the fish downstream are very happy. Another important Midpen restoration project is in Coal Creek Preserve, just above the community of Portola Valley. It features a major regional trail connection that leads from the valley floor to the top of the ridge. But after decades of use, the trail bed and culverts failed, eroding the hillside and clogging the creek below with sediment. There was water filling all up and the roadway just washing it all out, so it's a big ravine. And what we hope to do is oversize the culvert and replace it with something brand new. We hope to improve you know, the health of our watersheds here by addressing the sedimentation and keeping the trail in as good of a condition as possible. With the new culvert installed, Midpen narrowed the gash and reopened this popular trail once again. What excites me most about this project is uh, creating safe open space access for more users. I think that with the improvements we're gonna make, we can open up this more safely for more people to enjoy and it will lend to the longevity of the road and the trail. Enhancing these trails and the overall health of nearby watersheds also sets the stage for salmon and trout to return and thrive. The San Gregorio Creek watershed um, and other watersheds throughout the San Mateo County coast are critical habitat for anadromous fish species like steelhead trout and coho salmon. And our goal is to uh, restore watershed function and ecological processes um, that will enable the recovery of those types of species. These fish have been absent from local creeks for generations. Now Midpen and one of its public partners, the Resource Conservation District of San Mateo County, known as the RCD, are working to reestablish healthy fish populations here once again. The only reason that their populations have dwindled is because of us. And so it's our responsibility to bring them back from the brink of extinction. Near the town of La Honda, the partners are recreating natural salmon habitat by putting large logs into creeks to help stabilize the banks, slow down the water, and allow deep, cool pools to form, which salmon need to spawn. It was thought for a very long time that, that wood in streams is bad, that it's a negative and we should be taking it out. And so it turns out that wood adds a really 
important complexity to stream systems um, that's been lost in historic times. And so by uh, installing these large woody debris structures like the one behind me, uh, we can recreate some of that complexity. It is the culmination of well over 10 years, arguably 15 or 20 years of work to restore the watershed and to make conditions that are hospitable, habitable for the fish. With the watershed on the road to recovery, the RCD and Midpen are reintroducing salmon and trout back into coastside waterways. So not only do we have a responsibility to care for them, but we're also inspired to care for them because it's, it's soulful, rewarding work. Raised in a nearby hatchery, it's hoped that these fascinating but vulnerable fish will return regularly to this creek to give birth to many new generations. And by keeping these watersheds healthy, we can all thrive here side by side for years to come. These landscapes, these open spaces, towering forests, free-flowing streams, and rolling hills, they're all here thanks to the public who created and has supported Midpen over the past 50 years. It's a remarkable legacy, but there's still much more work to be done. Today, we've realized that there is a much greater need to protect these lands, not just for green space and, and vistas and habitat, but for resilience across the entire region. The impacts of climate change are upon us and accelerating at a rapid pace. Sea rise, drought, and wildfires are all growing threats and work is underway to address them. Climate change has multiple different effects and though we don't know exactly sure what's gonna be happening in the future in terms of some of the climate change, we are seeing some of the effects now. In recent years, wildfires have become more common and more catastrophic. Midpen's plans include several strategies to mitigate this risk. Here at Midpen, we're going through and thinning out forests cutting down some of the underbrush, limbing up some of the trees, all in an effort to make it more resilient to fire and to climate change. Fire plays a fundamental role in the health of California's native ecosystems. And before European arrival, landscapes burned on a regular basis. Fire is nature's vacuum in a way. Uh, it goes through, uh, it clears out the underbrush, it maintains certain areas, and there are certain species that they absolutely need fire for them to survive. Until recently, most land management plans included a no-burn policy, where efforts were made to extinguish all fires. This resulted in an accumulation of dry, dead trees, limbs, and debris, perfect fuel, for fires. There's quote unquote good fire and bad fire, right? Bad fire, catastrophic, good fire, stays on the ground, burns on through. Um, and that's one of the efforts of our fire program as well, is to reintroduce fire in certain areas that we know it's safe to do so. This good fire is scientifically prescribed and carefully controlled. With lots of preparation and planning, Midpen will begin deploying this tactic in partnership with fire agencies to increase the region's resilience to fire. That controlled burn, putting fire on the ground when it is safe to do so, can really help out the environment by reintroducing fire as a natural process in which the ecology of the area really, really needs. Another climate change concern is sea level rise, where the loss of wetland habitat is threatening the future of endangered species like the salt marsh harvest mouse and the Ridgeway's rail. Healthy wetlands for wildlife will also act like sponges, soaking up rising seas and protecting nearby communities from flooding. With rising sea level, the water now is covering areas in which in the past were not being impacted. Midpen is working to protect these valuable wetland environments. 
One technique that many organizations, including MidPen, utilizes is to create these refugias out in the tidal marshlands in which the soils are higher than what they were before in recognition of sea level rise. And this will provide these additional safe havens for these species. The public is also stepping up to support this important work. If you have one of these, you can come with me. At the Ravenswood Open Space Preserve in East Palo Alto, local volunteers are restoring native shoreline habitat. I feel like I can actually do something to help with the climate change efforts. If you look around, like you see teenagers, you see little children, you see parents like engaging in this work and realizing how important it is for their community and actually showing up and participating. It can be really paralyzing and people will sometimes feel like there's nothing that they could do and I think this provides an outlet for people to get involved in their like local park and have a change on the land. Volunteers and citizen support has always been essential to Midpen's success. So 50 to forever means that these lands with continued public support will be protected in perpetuity. And there's still more work to be done though. There's still that longer lasting work to make sure that we continue to connect these lands to protect the resiliency into the future. 50 years ago, people saw an urgent need to protect vulnerable natural environments and make them accessible to a rapidly growing population along the peninsula. What started out as a small grassroots effort has grown into a well-loved and successful public agency committed to preserving gifts of nature and leaving an extraordinary open space legacy for everyone to enjoy far into the future. These Midpen lands belong to all of us and the generations who will follow. And thankfully, they are in good hands.